If I had to make a complete rule book for my over 6k hours spent playing and coaching Rocket League, it'd probably be longer than this. This is 14 Rocket League rules to get SSL in 14 minutes or less. If you're new here, I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we specialize in taking hard stuck gold through champs up to GC in just six weeks or less. And right now, when I'm recording this, we have 68 players actively enrolled. Once we fill up these last hundred, we'll have to go on pause until more room opens up or we can hire more coaches. So if you want to join the now over 2,200 players who've used the GCR to rank up, or you just want in before we freeze enrollment, DM me on Discord with the keyword freeze, and we can talk details. My Discord will be first link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get into the rules. Okay, rule number one, focus on yourself. If you want to improve at Rocket League, you've got to understand that this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. Across all the ranked games that you're going to have to queue in order to get GC, SSL, or whatever your goal is, the only common denominator is you. So if your goal is to get high ranked in this game or any game, it starts with mentality and focusing on yourself. No matter what rank you are watching right now or what rank you get to, your teammates are going to be annoying. And as tempting as it is to unmute on voice, type in quick chat, and let your solo queue teammate know everything they're doing wrong, don't do it. Trust me, trying to live coach your solo queue teammate has never and will never end well. So as you play, keep your mouth shut and focus on yourself. Because when you focus on yourself, you'll get better. And if you focus on others, you're just going to get tilted. Rule number two, when you're awkward, rotate out. As you climb through the ranks, there are going to be a lot of moments where you're unsure whether or not to go for the ball, you're caught in an awkward situation, or you're just otherwise confused. For example, a super common situation I see people in, especially if you play twos or threes below GC, is getting caught under the ball. What ends up happening is your vision goes straight up into the sky and you lose access to all the information with what's happening around you on the field. So as a general rule, whenever you get into these awkward positions where the ball's over your head, or frankly, you just don't know what to do, make it your default to rotate out. Because the truth is, you making a decision when you're under the ball like that is gonna be a complete guess. And most of the time, it's better to just play it safe, get back, reset your vision, and make an informed play from there. Of course, this is by no means an end-all be-all for every single situation, but especially below GC, your ranked games are gonna go so much smoother. Rule number three, make your play and rotate out. Yes, while you may see the pros go for reset after shot, after reset again. If you're watching below GC or SSL, you should not be going for these sorts of plays. While it's fine to go for something flashy every now and then, what's not okay is continuing to go for the ball again and again if your teammate has more boost or is waiting in turn behind you. This is why I recommend in 90% of situations, make it your default to make your play and rotate out as quick as possible. Even though this might not be optimal and there are certain situations where it's fine to follow up the ball more than just once or twice by making your play style clear as day and just doing this your teammates are going to play so much better around you and just overall you'll find your teammate double committing over you and miscommunication and all the rest of it happening way less number four always keep ball cam on during moments of action the concept of moments of action versus moments of inaction is super important to understand and it's something I didn't even learn until I was past Grand Champ. A moment of action is any point in time during a play where the direction of the ball might change and you don't know what's going to happen next. For example, if the ball's about to bounce off a wall and you don't know where it is, if a 50-50 is about to happen and you don't know where it's going to go, or a player just has the ball and you don't know their next move, it's important that you keep your eyes on the play. A mistake I see a lot at the low ranks is turning off ball cam during these moments of action and say rotating back or picking up boost. This doesn't work because by the time you turn ball cam back on, you'll just be guessing where the play was headed. So instead, stay grounded, keep ball cam on as much as possible. Then of course, if the play dies down or there's a moment where you know predictably where the ball's gonna go, then you can go grab boost and use the extra time. Otherwise, try to keep your eyes on the play. 
Rule number five, put 80% of your time into the fundamentals. The truth is of all the mechanics there are in Rocket League, 20% of them are gonna give you 80% of your results in ranked. The majority of the flashy stuff you see, unfortunately, is not that useful. And if your goal is specifically to rank up as fast as possible, the best way to do that is gonna be by training the fundamentals. There's a lot more for me to say when it comes to training mechanics. So if you wanna learn more about this, there are two videos I've made that have gotten really positive feedback on this. One is called the nine must know mechanics for GC. Or if you're a little bit higher ranked, I made a video called the best mechanics for every rank in Rocket League. And that has got some really positive feedback as well. So if you wanna learn more about what you should be working on, definitely check out one of those. I'll have it linked on screen. Number six, check out your own replays at least every now and then. The fastest way to rank up in Rocket League is not learning new things, but instead by fixing your bad habits. When you watch your own replays, you're gonna pick up on a lot of things that you didn't realize you were doing when you're at full speed playing the game. While by no means should you obsess about fixing everything when you watch a replay, it's super useful to check out a replay every time you go up one or two ranks to see if you've picked up any bad habits. If you watch a replay and you uncover just one bad habit that you can then fix, you might be able to jump up another rank without having to learn anything new at all. Rule number seven, watch better players. The sweet spot for watching gameplay to improve is gonna be about one to two ranks above you. What I suggest you try to avoid doing is copying players that are significantly higher ranked than you. The reason it might be bad for you to copy the pros if you're not like GC3 or SSL already is because when you copy players super far ahead of you, you have to understand that you don't have all the mechanics to get away with the stuff they can get away with. Especially when it comes to recoveries, pros are going to be able to play more aggressive and still recover in situations where you probably can't. So if your goal is improvement, try to watch players that are one or two ranks above you, and it'll give you a bit more clarity on exactly what you need to do to get to the next rank. Number eight, I hate to break it to you, but if you made it to this point in the video, stop caring about your rank. If you're somebody who tilts or suffers from burnout, pay attention because this is something I see a ton, especially with players who are super competitive from my coaching program. The thing you have to understand is while it's good to want to improve, if you obsess too much about rank, you will fail. The problem is if you attach all of your happiness to your ranked performance every day, you're gonna be on an emotional roller coaster and every win or loss is going to affect your mentality and how you play. Yes, if you're watching, you probably want to rank up and you probably want to get better, but obsessing over the details, at least from my experience, is not a healthy way to do it. Rule number nine, train kickoffs. Look guys, if you're sitting there watching this video and you're below GC right now, looking for the secret to rank up, step zero is gonna be train your kickoffs. This might sound stupid for me to include in a video, but the amount of players I've seen below GC who can air dribble but miss kickoffs, it, it's just too high. So yeah, if you watch my content and you truly want to get better, you know what to do. Rule number 10, pay attention to your boost management. Almost everybody knows that you should pick up more small pads and work on your boost management. But what a lot of people don't know and what I don't see talked about enough is how to actually work on picking up more small pads and fixing your boost management. So let's talk about it super quick. Without going into detail on boost usage or advanced recoveries or stuff like that, my number one recommendation to pick up more small pads and get better at collecting boost is to stop trying to memorize the small pads. Instead, you want to remember common routes you're going to rotate on instead. I made a complete video on this for the guys in my coaching program and I'll have it linked for free in my Discord. But the short of it is you need to understand that the boost pads in Rocket League are set up 
to help you do all the common rotations. If you need to rotate from front post to back post, there's this rainbow hook that will allow you to do it. If you need to rotate from one side of the field to the other side of the field, the X pads will allow you to do it. And if you need to rotate up or down the field, well, you have these long hooks and a little worse, the straight up line down the center of the field to do that. Point is, there's a boost lane for every common situation. So memorize these situations rather than memorizing the pads and you're gonna get so much better at picking them up. Number 11, avoid tilt queuing. Look, if your goal is to rank up, half of the battle is just gonna be outsmarting yourself. And look, I can tell you from experience, most of us playing the game know that we do some things that don't help us rank up. So if you're somebody who tilt queues or plays the game while they're half asleep at 2 a.m. or goes into it without warming up, I mean, the list goes on and on. Fix the things you know you should fix and you'll rank up. Number 12, avoid shiny object syndrome. With all the freestylers and highlight reels you see on YouTube, it can be really easy to think to yourself, if only I knew how to air dribble, if only I knew how to flip reset, if only I knew how to, you know, fill in the blank here, then I would rank up. But as tempting as it is to think that, those things are most likely not what you're missing. Of course, it's fine to practice flashy stuff for fun, but don't fall into the trap of thinking that you need one mechanic in order to rank up. For most of you watching, that's not how it works, and you probably know everything you need to to rank up. You just need to do it better and more consistently. I'm sorry. Number 13, always warm up, but more importantly, don't feel obligated to play ranked. I don't know about you, but for me, when I sign on to Rocket League, some days I just know I'm going to play bad. For whatever reason, whether it's with my warm up or if I didn't sleep good that day or I'm just feeling tired, I, I don't know, whatever it may be, sometimes we have those feelings that we're going to play well or we're going to not play well. If you have one of those feelings, listen to it. So many players in my coaching program will tell me they Q ranked because they had to, <laughs> but if you know you're off or you've been gone for like a week or two, don't play ranked right when you get back. It's totally fine to sign on and just play casuals or just play for fun if you don't want to tank your rank. Finally, rule number 14, focus on one thing at a time. Whether you're trying to improve your mechanics or your game sense or any aspect of Rocket League, it is really easily to get overwhelmed by how much you need to learn. The truth is you're going to have to learn a lot on your road to SSL or even just GC. But regardless of your rank, the worst thing you can do is try to learn everything all at once. Plus, when you don't pick one thing at a time to work on, this is what leads to you just mindlessly driving around in free play or wasting time in general. So when it comes to improvement with anything really, take things one step at a time. Pick one mechanic to focus on. Pick one bad habit you're trying to fix. Or even pick one tip from this video and just work on that and only come back for more once you got that down. Trust me, by learning one thing at a time, you're gonna be so much less stressed, you're gonna improve so much faster, and you'll save loads of time in the long run. Okay, that was 14 rules in 14 minutes or less, and yes, while I know I'm coming up on time here, the one thing I want to admit is that no, these aren't really rules. I know I said these were rules in the title, but at the end of the day, you have to understand Rocket League is a video game. If your goal is to improve, you need to remember to actually have fun and do what you enjoy doing. It's gonna take you at least several hundred hours to get GC and likely several thousand to get SSL. So I'd rather you practice an imperfect routine that you can stick to over the long term rather than a perfect one that will make you quit the game after 100 hours. So that was 14 Rocket League rules, but do what you enjoy doing and you can rank up that way too. If you want more, DM my Discord for coaching. Check out this next video for me on screen here. And as always, thanks for watching.